So this is the Nescaf filter build uh, video number two, uh, the after shot, I guess. Uh, I've built the Nescaf audio filter, uh, popped it into this nice little box, and here is the functional test. On the Mac, I've got a file captured off the air of PSK31 activity, and if I hit play, right, should be able to hear coming out of the speaker some PSK31 and over here on the PC I've got mixed W running and you can see the waterfall plot right now the bandpass filter is bypassed on the back of the filter there is a switch which is marked on or bypass and it's in the bypass position there's power 13.8 volts provided through power pole connectors and there's an input in and output for audio. So right now it's completely passive and bypassed. The audio volume is just controlled by whatever the, the uh, source is sending out. So I'm going to turn on the filter and you hear nothing now. At least we've got the light on to tell us that something's happening. So AF gain is all the way down. If we turn it up we should start to hear something. So with the uh, LM386, uh, the signal can be boosted beyond uh, the original gain level, but generally you probably want to adjust it to be about equivalent to what uh, you have in the bypass position. So right now, uh, bandwidth is maximally wide, and if I begin to cone down on the bandwidth, turning that knob to the right, Uh, you can see the roll off towards lower frequency. The frequency uh, midpoint setting is the knob on the right side of the panel and it's all the way to the left and the uh, the way it's adjusted the lowest position is around 500 uh, hertz and the highest position is around 1500 hertz uh, on the thought that most of the time you'll want to tune a signal in that range at least for CW. So there's now picked out one fairly strong uh, signal coming through. And if I click on it in mix W, even without clicking on it, it seems actually to have decoded it pretty well. Uh, you get clear printing text. Okay, that guy stopped, of course, as we did this. So if I take the uh, frequency knob and I begin to turn it to the right, even the background noise begins to go up in frequency. And we'll tune across some other signals. and they'll become prominent. And the width on this is pretty tight. I think maybe 200 or so hertz uh, in terms of the usable range and probably uh, a bandwidth of uh, I think 70 to 90 hertz is the, the specification. I can't remember how many decibels down that is at, at that parameter. So here's another signal being decoded. So it really cones in nicely uh, and eliminates uh, part of the spectrum. That's about it. So uh, it works nicely. The case is a bud case uh, which uh, was drilled out and the, the board stuck in there. And then uh, the, the real difficulty was getting the pots not to hit the board. So it's a larger case than I would have liked to have used. but. The center pot, the bandwidth, is a double gang pot, so it has quite a bit of depth to it. Uh, ideally, a longer, uh, maybe a shorter box would have been used. This is what I had on hand. And just a note about the lettering. Th these are slide-off uh, decals that I printed on a laser printer, and then uh, you wet them and put them uh, on and slide them into position and let them dry. And that worked out really well, so I'm quite happy with the labeling. So there's... Uh, Version 1 uh, of my build of the Nescaf filter. That is all. AI4SV, signing off.